This is FBG Jen and FBG Kristen. And I'm FBG Margo, host and producer. You're listening to the podcast that will help you keep a lid on the junk in the trunk and inspire you to live a happy and confident life. Each episode, we chat with motivational experts and celebs and share our own candid adventures in being healthy. If you're looking for a podcast that's equal parts hilarious and enlightening, well then welcome to the Fit Bottom Girls podcast. Welcome back to the Fit Bottom Girls podcast. This is part two of our interview with Daniel Laporte. I am FBG Margo, and on the line today, we have Jen. Oh. And we have Kristen. Hello. And if you thought part one was good, whoa, Nelly, guys. Wait till you hear today part two of this interview with Daniel Laporte. What do you guys think? Whoa, Nelly is right. (laughs) Yes, we got into some of my favorite stuff in this part. Same here. So... One of the things we talk about in part two is let it be easy. So can one of you talk about like, what is that? That what is that mantra that that we we have for FBG? Let it be easy. She says mantra, right? Hmm? Yeah, she does. Mantra. Yeah, she really does. Everyone (laughs) wait for that. That's pretty great. I can't roll my R's Uh, today for some reason. (laughs) (laughs) Um, (laughs) So as you will kind of hear in the questions, or Kristen, do you want to tell the let it be easy story? Sure. I'm happy to. Okay, I do have thoughts on it beyond that, but yeah, it's your story. Okay, Let It Be Easy is one of Danielle Laporte's truth bombs. And last year for Christmas, Jen had given me a a box with a whole bunch of cards with truth, truth bombs in them. And so sometimes when I was just needing inspiration, I would reach in and pull one out. And at one point, this was when we were sort of negotiating last year, Aaron, who was you know, one of our founders um, exited the business to go pursue other interests and which is all, you know, awesome and cool, but it's still like a huge transition. And there were, there were times when it was scary and hard and, you know, like every change is scary and hard at some point. And I was just like, God, I need something like, tell me, tell me how to do this because I feel, I feel uncomfortable. Um, And I pulled out the truth bomb that said, let it be easy. And I was like, oh, well, sure. Okay. And it was exactly what I needed at exactly the right time. I took a picture of it and I sent it to Jen and I think to Aaron too, because I was just yeah. like, hey guys, like here, like let, let's do this. And it was honestly just this amazing shift of, okay, let's look at the whole situation a little differently. And we just kind of changed some of the conversations we were having. Things started moving very easily at that point, you know, still scary, big change and transition but there was a different energy around it. So of course this card has now lived on my refrigerator ever since. And it's the, the mantra that we come back to every time something doesn't feel like a perfect exact fit. So it's, it's, and it's really been both personally and professionally uh, one of the strongest mottos I think of my life, because it's, you know, like doing the things that you want to do and creating the life that you want to create that shouldn't be hard guys like if it's hard then see if there's a different way to approach it see if there's a different way to to let what you want come into being because if it's meant to be then it's it's likely to come in and I'm not saying like sit on your ass and don't do hard work like I work hard I work hard every day but I don't force things that aren't meant to be there and if I'm getting a lot of very clear signs that something shouldn't be, meaning it's really, really hard and I can't find a good way around it, then maybe it's, that's my sign to let it go. And so that's, and it's just been something that we've come back to over and over and over and over again with the business um, as we've changed from like our, our official name for our business is Fit Bottomed World because we have, you know, Fit Bottomed Girls, Fit Bottomed Eats, Fit Bottomed Mamas, Fit Bottomed Zen, the podcast, our coaching. So it's, it's bigger and it's, but it's very much a, okay. When the, when the right opportunity comes in, when it's the easy choice that when it feels good, that's how we know. Yeah. It is an amazing, really like, yeah. It, like the center of my being live, let it be easy is, yeah. is, is how we make a lot of decisions. And what I think is interesting to note, and I think Danielle in the interview kind of gets at this too, is that sometimes letting it be easy is actually kind of making the difficult choice. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
So, but once you do it, like everything after that is so much easier. Because if you're like, oh, you know, if you're trying to make something fit, it's not a fit, it's not a fit, you just keep, keep banging your head against the wall. You know, it, it may not be easy to say no or to place a boundary or to go a different direction. Like, especially if like all of logic tells you, why would you turn that down? Like, why would you ever say no to that opportunity? You know, who cares if it's kind of like weird or doesn't feel right or seems like it's going to be a pain in the ass or something like you should do that for, you know, these reasons over here to make your business better or have it grow or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes it is hard to be like, no, that doesn't feel right. This is not going the direction, you know, we don't fully align with that that's kind of sometimes a difficult thing to do but what that does is for at least how Chris and I found is like once you you do that it kind of like releases so much and allows so much to be able to to come in let it be easy but so much is like the shift of perception and just to think you know does does everything have to be hard or could I change the way I think about this like what what are we not seeing you can apply that to relationships too Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, like um, with friendships and, you know, I have friendships that, yeah, we've all been through this. Like you have like a really challenging, difficult friend. And at some point you kind of go like, what am I getting from this? You know, and and then you have friendships with people who it's easy. Like you said, it's always easy and it's always great. And like, why am I not making more time for that versus, you know, or, or, or personal relationships or love relationships or whatever, or family relationships. I yeah. mean, yeah, you could totally apply it to that. You can even apply it to health and fitness stuff. Yep. I mean, how many times have you kind of like in your head toiled over like, should I eat that for lunch or that for lunch? Should I order this? Should I go to the gym or should I not go to the gym? Like how, I mean, could you just let some things be easy and just be like, oh, I'm just going to order this. Like I can just stop with all of like the mental drama and just be like, Oh, I love myself. I'm going to eat the salad or I'm going to order whatever the heck I want to. And I'm going to enjoy every bite and not be like guilty or ashamed over it. Like I'm going to own it. Yeah. I just had the best reminder of this come up today in my, in my Facebook memories. I, I had my recap and video from when I did the, the Augusta half iron, which was three years ago now, four years ago. And, and I'm watching the video and I am beaming every shot like I am happy I am working hard like it is everything like that race was everything I wanted it to be and I worked hard to make it that but it was it was exactly the experience that I had dialed dialed in and called in for myself it was just what I wanted and um and I haven't done any distance beyond like a 10k this whole year um by choice because the last time I did anything long, it felt like a slog. And the time before that, it felt like a slog. And I was realizing that I wasn't enjoying the training. I wasn't looking forward to my long runs. I wasn't looking forward to those races. So I was like, oh, okay, so nobody's actually forcing me to do this. Why don't I do the races that I'm like excited about and enjoy and do the training that right now feels good and and that I will look forward to? And it was just such a such an interesting thing to like see and have be super I mean it it was kind of clear obviously because I had made that choice months ago but it was such a validation of like oh that's right doing this really long hard stuff can be amazing when I'm ready for it and when it's the right thing for me to be to be doing so yeah I mean this (laughs) let it be easy can totally apply to half iron man races <laughs> let's be clear <laughs> and wait i mean i think there's so many women that are just like oh you know everything would be great if i just lost this last 5 10 15 20 pounds or whatever and maybe it would maybe it wouldn't maybe you look great now you know <laughs> like right. maybe you just be like cool i can do a lot of cool things i'm going to focus on really feeling good and kind of let it be easy let it go well especially with fitness it's like why are you forcing yourself to do things you don't like doing? You know, you're, you're going to get mad at yourself. You're going to like blow it off or whatever. If you like ballet, take ballet, you know, yeah. if, if you yeah. like power walking, go power walking. Who cares? Like just do the things that you love. Like you said, that give you pleasure and you're always going to look forward to it versus making yourself take you. like the Barry's boot camp. I'm, you know, I don't want to brand them negatively or anything like that, but I, I know I teach a boot camp and every once in a while I'll have somebody who come in for a few weeks and I know they're not enjoying it. It's just not their jam. 
And it's, you know, I kind of like to say them gently, like, you know, we have Pilates, we've got spin, we've got, you know, Zumba, you maybe that's your thing, right? Find your jam and then expect, just like Kristen, expect your jam to change a bunch of different times. That's what makes life fun. You know what? It's okay for the jam to change. That's another thing I want to bring up because I used to love cycling all the time. I cycled like 100 miles all the time. And then after a while, I'm like, my hips hurt. My lower backs hurts. You know, I've been all over Long Island, you know, (laughs) 100 (laughs) miles. I've kind of done it a bunch of times. Like I can kind of pat myself on the back and then Mm -hmm. take off just to Far Rockaway and have some tacos with friends. And and that's part of the the process of, you know, being on a bike too. It's not all about competition. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That's the truth. That's the truth, Ruth. Okay. So we also talked about our creative process. And Kristen, you asked this tough question of us this week (laughs) for the (laughs) pre-show. So you get to answer first. What is your creative process? Oh, well, the reason I asked is because I need help. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So I, that's not entirely true. I mean, I, I, my ideal, let's talk about what it would be in an ideal world. And that would be that I come in and I sit at my desk and it's clear and it's clean and and I don't pull up Facebook and I don't check email and that I just sit down and think and maybe spend some time meditating on what it is that I want to say. And then I put my fingers on the keyboard and I allow the words to flow through me onto the page and they're magnificent and perfect and they require no editing. So that doesn't happen in my life, um, (laughs) at least not very often. Um, But what I do do is I pay pretty close attention to when I do have something to say and it's not always very convenient, but I, I have a hard time forcing my creativity. What I do to kind of, let's say, nudge it along is I love my mornings at the beach when I can go with a a cup of coffee and my little chair and a notebook. And that's when I'll go and I can just write like stuff, not necessarily work stuff, not necessarily book stuff, not necessarily, like sometimes it's journaling. It's literally just whatever is coming to mind. And that seems to be a place where I can connect better than I can in most other places. But I also just, you know, like I said, I try to pay attention to when I do have something to say. And I also pay attention to when I don't. I don't know how many times I've had a post that, uh, like with our editorial calendar, we try to work ahead reasonably far so that we're never in a situation where if, you know, one of us is out, uh, that it really throws anything off. And there have totally been times when I'm like, Jen, I know I would, I said I would have this post into you. And I have been staring at the page for 30 minutes and all I have is like the, which I've deleted (laughs) retyped 16 times because it doesn't seem right. And I'm like, you know, I just have to leave and I'll come back. And then the next morning I'll sit down and I'll have the whole thing done in 15 minutes because it just had to take shape somewhere, but it wasn't going to take shape with me staring at a blank page. So so that's a terrible answer. I am very no, well uh-huh. sorry for anyone no. who's looking for a pearl of wisdom from me because I got nothing <laughs> for you other than tune in and listen and be better at it than I am. Well, I know that this is the pre-show for Danielle, but we are talking to um, another gal named Dina here later at a future app, and she talked about intuition and tapping into your intuition. And I think that the intuition and the creative process, like for me, go together so strongly. And I think that's exactly like a lot of what you're talking about too, Kristen, is like sometimes you're like, oh my gosh, like I intuitively feel like I need to write this piece. Like I need to write this now. This needs to kind of come out. And then there are other times where I feel like, okay, I need to write this, but I don't have all the information around it yet. Like I don't have, it's not time yet. Like it's coming, but it's not time. And then when I don't know. Then when I feel like it is time for that and I can force my creative process a little bit, it it has been known to happen, but the forcing versus just like when it comes out, like you just said, like 15 minutes, write a post, no big deal, you know, versus two or three hours to do something that is that forced creativity that still is just like, I don't know if this feels right. It's very different. But for me with the creative process, so I have really like, pretty well set work hours just because of childcare. So I am, I, 
it has, it has definitely made me be incredibly focused with my time. Um, so I kind of like come in and I, I hit the ground like running because I'm trying to get as much done as I can. But I found that like my essential oils diffuser, like that's kind of like my thing. Like I, my, I only am in my office to pretty much work or to write. And if I come in and I usually pick one of like a few different essential oils, like I, I usually either like a, like something grapefruit or orange, if it's kind of energizing, or if I feel like I want to do something that's a little bit more calming, um, I have a cedar wood that's kind of, it smells like cedar wood. So it smells almost like outside. It smells really, really good. And so I put that on and I usually like take a couple deep breaths, <laughs> turn on my computer and then uh, start kind of tackling my to-do list. But if I find that a post is not like, it's like, I'm like, okay, now's my time to write and nothing is happening. And it's just like hitting walls. Then I just, I just transition. I'm like, okay, well, let's do something else. Let's do something that takes less brain power. What else sounds like it should be, you know, fun to do or less torturous to do on my to-do list. And if I'm really at a place where like none of that is happening, even like entering numbers into a spreadsheet is, is torture. And it's like, okay, you know what? I actually do love my job and love my work. So hello, this is a sign that I need to go do something else. And that's where I'll do a meditation or I'll go outside or I'll pet my dog or I'll, you know, call Kristen and be like, oh my God, uh, <laughs> will you please, <laughs> will you please talk through life with me and then come back. But I, so much of it is, I believe a, it is kind of a practice. Like you can kind of, especially with writing, you can almost train yourself through repetition. Like mm -hmm. I write almost every single day. I kind of feel weird if I, you know, go, like if I'm on vacation and I haven't written for a while, it's kind of, it's like weird, you know? So Kristen, I actually think you have a pretty awesome creative process for the record. I think so too. Thanks. I mean, the beach and everything. So and yeah. the other thing is music. If I am not in like a, um, a place where like, cause for FBG, I mean, we want to, we want to be really motivational, really motivational and encouraging. We want to, you know, sometimes we want to make people, you know, think or feel or see something from a different way. But sometimes it's just like, we want to get you excited and realize how awesome you are. So if I'm not feeling awesome that day, it's uh, kind of difficult to write, oh, you're awesome too content, you know? Right. So, <laughs> yeah, so not, not super authentic, which <laughs> doesn't really jive with our typical jam. No. Right. Like we do everything we can to be as authentic as we can. <laughs> so, you know, it's like, all right, I'm not going to go Pollyanna something but, you know, a couple feel good songs, uh, maybe a little bit of like, you know, the fitness marshal on YouTube, like start cracking up. And then all of a sudden you're like, OK, let's do this. And then you can write. So I guess that's my other kind of like that's more of like a creativity tip. And my other thing that I have to add, because I just thought of it. And then, Margot, I want to hear all about yours is I'm a bird by bird believer. So if you guys have ever read Anne Lamott's Bird by Bird, um, the concept is basically it's her book on writing. And it's it's a wonderful read. It's funny. It's it's touching. It's it, it's great. And I think it would be great even if I wasn't a writer. Like, it's just really interesting. But it comes down to this concept of her working with with her son on a school project that he came to her with at the you know 11th hour. And it required I, I, I'm going to get this all wrong. Sorry, Anne, if you're listening, which would be like a total dream come true. It, it was like a jillion birds that he had to have in, you know, a diorama or something. And they were, she, he was like, oh, my gosh, how am I going to get this done? How are we going to finish this? And the answer was bird by bird. And so when, you know, when I have something coming in and I know that it needs to happen and I know I need to create it or I want to create it, but it's overwhelming to look at the whole thing, I bird by bird it and, you know, just just get that first bit and then see where the next bit goes and then see what the other parts are and where those fit in. And that helps keep me from freaking out because that can, that can happen. Let it be uh, easy. Let yeah. it be easy. Bird by bird. <laughs> Margo, how do you roll? So I roll, I, I'm a big Stephen King fan and I, I love his, his writing and it's, I know it's not for everyone, but he has a fantastic nonfiction book called on writing and he wrote it a few years after he had, he was in a car accident. He was hit by a car by a drunk driver and it took him months and months to rehabilitate. And the way he came back was as his wife, like he, he used, he would write in the attic of his huge mansion in Maine 
And his wife, who's been with him for 55 years, set him up for, to write at the kitchen table because that's the only place he could be is on the bottom floor. And he just got out of bed and started writing every single day since like he was a kid. He just mm-hmm. applied it to there, and that was part of his healing process. And that, his whole thing was that find what works for you, but like do it every single day. And it's the mm-hmm. consistency. And understanding most of what you're going to write is going to be crap, but the good stuff is there. You just got to work at it. You know, the thing that yeah. stymies a lot of us is like, oh, I want this to be brilliant. You know, I, I don't, you know, and it, it's not, yeah. it takes a while <laughs> to get there, you know, and he, he's, he's so encouraging in that way. And it's all about just storytelling and being creative in general. It's a real, I would totally recommend this book on writing by Stephen King. It's just really, really inspiring. And then once again, like you, I, you, Jen, I'm all about music. Like, I've just yeah. got to have music going. I live in an apartment building that's kind of noisy. You guys can hear it from time to time. So I kind of have to have the music on to kind of compete with that sound when I'm working all day. And I find it very motivating, and it really keeps me focused. So sometimes it's loud rock. Sometimes it's disco. Sometimes it's show tunes. Like, whatever it is, like, I, I find what's going to inspire me that day, and that really helps me also get through it and then I write all the playlists all the time for my classes so that's another place where I get creative and for me it's like that first song I pick that one song for the warm-up and that usually inspires me I can just jam it all out when I pick any kind of any old song for a warm-up song I find those playlists take me forever to finish but I have one in my head that I think is like oh this is such a great song it always just works out perfectly so it's always fine that because like one song leads to another song oh yeah so, yeah, and like, it makes me think of this song. And, yeah, yeah, I was playing this with the newest one. It was uh, "City of Blinding Lights" by U2, and mm-hmm. it's like this love song to New York, and it's just this most beautiful song, and it just goes up and down in energy, and everybody kind of bops their head along. You know, everybody knows it when they hear it, and yep. it just gets, it gets everyone in the mood. Like, okay, we're working out now. This is what we're doing. So, that's my process. I love, I love it. it. Thank you. Jinx, buy me a coke. <laughs> <laughs> Buy me, buy, me, buy me a kombucha. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so are we ready now for part two of Daniel Laporte? Yeah, you I guys was... buckle up. It's so great. It's so yeah. awesome. Just in general, just speaking. Um, and you do have these truth bombs. You can get, they're like in your, like the bottom of your planners and the, the decks of cards and um, your your app and like your email and everything you talk about these truth bombs and we actually here at fpg we use one of them that Kristen pulled from the deck that i got her which was let it be easy we use that for our business Mm -hmm. all the time just let it be easy and that just really spoke to us so isn't that can i just stop you there isn't that powerful in terms of business development like and it's so the opposite of what we've been taught like do it the hard way and push and create your funnels and your marketing and you're like no, let it be easy. Like, who do you really want to talk to? Who's yes. already here? What would be fun to talk about? What kind of product would really light you up? What kind of event would you actually love to do? Yeah, easy, easy. It makes you so much more alive and of service. When you're doing what's easy, you're just way more effective. You're way more fun to be around. And you can really show up and, and contribute. Yeah, okay. <laughs> totally. And we've just had so many, like, I mean, just openings just come in where we're like, we have this issue. Why we this isn't working? Da 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 da, and we'll just be like, dude, live. I mean, we, we made it an acronym, but it's now live, 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 and then boom, <laughs> like, and it's great. I mean, you can use that. That's fine. Oh, <laughs> we did take it for two, so we're like live, and then in a couple days or something or in a week, like it's it's like wow, well that just magically fixed the problem, oh, or something way great. better just showed up. I mean, it's amazing. It's amazing and it's almost, yeah. I mean, it's kind of an intention. So where? <laughs> Where, where do you get your truth bombs from? They just like drop in your brain and then you <laughs> speak them? Or how does that, yeah. how do you keep coming up with new ones? There's a really practical way and then there's a magical way. So the magical way is I'll just think of one and I write it down on my, I type it into my phone. I use Evernote obsessively. Or sometimes they just show up on little post-it notes around the place. And then the other, uh, so that's the magic. The practical way is when it's time to write out a new batch of truth bombs and scan them all in and get them loaded up. I just go through, you know, like three months of blog posts and I go, oh, that was a good line. Yeah. Oh, that sounded, I said that. Yeah. So they're there. They're, they're there. And I used to be like, these need to be, I need to get them in my sleep and like channel these. It's like, no, I can say something decent in an interview and I'm like, oh, 
that's a good one. Let's go with that. Yeah. And you write you write them? They're all like you write them and then you scan them in? Yeah, that's my handwriting. People are like, oh, you have a beautiful that handwriting. Like, beautiful. Yeah. Thanks. How long do you typically need between saying it and reading it before you realize that like, wow, that was killer? Because I have things <laughs> that I read that are like a, a couple years old and I think, ooh, gosh, I sometimes I'm pretty smart. But if I had read it the day after I wrote it, I would glance right over it. Oh, I see what you're saying. Well, my experience is I can read some stuff that I wrote a couple years ago and I just and be mortified that I said that. Oh. I can't I'm like, that was that was arrogant and short sighted and I wish I'd never said that. And it could still be helpful for somebody for some reason. They might hear it differently, read it differently, or it might meet them where they are in their life. A lot of I have this something that shuts off in my brain when where when I write where I never think about what anybody's going to think about it not while I'm writing it I mean once I hit publish that's where all the neuroses <laughs> kicks yeah. in I'm like oh I hope it likes and I hope it works you know but when I'm actually creating I just get into this really quiet zone I hope it never changes I never think oh my dad might read this what's he gonna think you know I just give it mm-hmm. yeah and so there's other times where I can write a piece where I think this is so important. Humanity needs to hear this. This is a transmission of light and bleh, like <laughs> there's very little reaction to it. And then there's times where I can write something really quickly and it feels light and easy. And by the way, you know, writing, having the experience of it being easy doesn't mean it's less valuable. I learned that a long time ago as a, as a writer but I think, well, you know, this is just sweet. It's like L-I-T-E. And it's amazing. And then that's the piece that's just like, wow, this made me cry. Or, you know, whatever all of our social media signs of quote-unquote success are. But So you never know. So I just try and stay anchored into like, this is what's in me. I'm really committed to being useful. If I can't be useful, I want to at least be entertaining. But really, really, I'm here to... You know, to put it in the most dramatic sense, just to ease suffering and to inspire some awareness. And if I can do that with a, with an Instagram post, awesome. Yeah. And do you currently have a favorite truth bomb or one that's really resonating with you just deeply right now? Well, what comes to mind is love more deeply. Mm-hmm. I think that's really what we're being called to do. I mean, it's yep. so easy to talk about love, but really to love more deeply. I mean, I just found out a friend of mine voted for Trump. No. <laughs> and, uh, love more uh, deeply. <laughs> yeah, love more deeply. And, you know, right now, I'm not, I don't know when you're going to air this, but, you know, there's lots of conversation right now about take a knee, don't take a knee. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm of the heart that I would take a knee. And I have friends who wouldn't. And I still love them. And I still want to have them over my house for dinner, you know. That's love more deeply. That's, you know, that calls me to really see someone's soul. And, yeah, yeah, it's not easy. It's not easy. But you'd be there anyway. So what's your advice for remaining authentic on social media? Where, you know, so many people in the world try to curate this perfect presence, you know, on on Mm. Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. Well, maybe not on Twitter so much, but definitely on Instagram and Facebook. Mm -hmm. So what's your Mm -hmm. advice for remaining authentic? Well, I think that being inauthentic is nothing new. (laughs) (laughs) Like, like, you know, just think about Pleasantville vibe in the 50s and how everybody – it was much more about being prim and proper and the perfect household. And like that was just a farce as well. There was just as much pain and promiscuity and breakdown. You know, all of that was there. So we're, we always want to fake it. And yeah, are we getting a little carried away with things getting manicured? For sure. I mean, filters are probably killing us. And apparently, statistically, too much social media is directly affecting people's happiness. And psychologists believe it's because of the constant comparison to other people's lives. That's sad and sick and, you know, sign of the times. Uh, So how to be authentic? First of all, I think you've got to question why you're engaging anyway. Like for a lot of us, 
it's our business. I, I mean, I've really personally am in a, a deep conundrum right now about my addiction to my iPhone and social media and what I need to do as an entrepreneur to get my stuff out there. And I'm because I'm because I'm clear that, you know, it doesn't work for me to have my day let, to use the planners as an example. It doesn't work for me financially to have my day planners with Amazon because Amazon screws its retailers, its content providers, creators to the wall. It's killing me dis- distributing through there. I'd rather distribute just through my site and just take care of my people who want my stuff and give them a good, you know, good price for everything. Uh, but how do I get to them? I have to play the social media game. I've got to post X amount of times on Instagram about the planners so that I can get them out and, you know, and run the business. So I'm in that pinch. Now back to like how I stay authentic. For me, it really helps to post in the moment. So there's lots of stuff that, you know, as a quote business that, you know, is part of our marketing and we have pre-scheduled and it's our pre-informative graphics that people need to see. And then there's just me. So most of the me stuff is me on my sofa in my living room feeling inspired in that moment. There's a lot of stuff I do when I wake up in the morning where I'm just like, this is what I want to say today to be helpful. There's times when I pulled over to the road, I'm like, I've got to put something out now about prayer or Photoshopping or comparison. That's me. And my authenticity is me sharing what matters to me, what I'm thinking. And I'm a, you know, I endeavor to be a thinking person. I mean, I'm really thinking about how the covers of women's fashion magazines are killing us. I don't see a lot of women that look like the women who are my friends yeah. or me. <laughs> right. Like some of those women look like some of my friends. They're all super slim and blonde and 18 years old. I mean, I know one person like that that I hang out with like one, <laughs> but you know, what, a, you know, like what about everybody? I saw mm. there's a popular women's magazine in Canada called Chatelaine and I hope I got the right magazine anyway. And they had a fuller figured woman on the cover. Now by fuller figured on a magazine cover, I mean, she is probably a size 12. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And I, and I scanned, I read the cover twice thinking this was like a special, you know, fat chick issue they were doing or love your body or something. It was like, I was looking for that, um, that derogatory, <laughs> Mm-hmm. or celebratory headline to match with the woman and it wasn't there hmm. and i thought holy shit hmm. this is a revolution she's yeah. a she's a woman that looks like so many women and they haven't made mention of this being an exception like oh something beautiful just happened so anyway that was a tangent but I keep it authentic by really just posting my thoughts for the day. And it, and as a creative, you know, a, with a capital C, professional creative, I have learned to not hold back in terms of what I want to put out. So it used to be like, oh, I've got this really great poetic piece or this political piece. I don't want to do too much today or I don't want to overwhelm anybody or maybe this isn't the right time. I'll do it later. And later doesn't happen. So if I am on fire and I want to say 10 political things that day, I will. If I ain't got nothing to say that day and I'm just home watching train spotting uh, like I was this weekend, then I don't have anything to say. And I don't. It's awesome. So if if someone listening is like, you know, I want to be my true self. I want to be authentic, authentic on in social media and on my life. But maybe she feels like... I don't know, maybe her little girl has just been pushed down for too long, not accepted, not accepted by society, parents, was told she would be something different, et cetera, um, and that she doesn't even really know who she is. What, what is kind of your best advice to a woman like that? Like, what are the first steps you kind of need to take to even to get to know who, that, who the hell you are? Mm-hmm. That's a great question. First of all, this requires courage. So I think in terms of a lot of motivational hype 
and self-help speak the messages figure out who you are and it's going to be so easy to follow your bliss (laughs) it's not easy (laughs) and it's part of being spiritually mature it's part of growing up is the hard work involved in discovering who you are and, and putting that out in the world then let me use a scare tactic to not do that work is death if you do not do the work to figure out what turns you on, what makes you feel free, when you feel connected, when you feel seen, when you feel sexy, when you feel at peace. If you do not do the things to do that, you will not feel at home in your body. You will be riddled with anxiety. For sure, there's going to be some medication in your future. You're not going to get laid the way you want to get laid. You're not going to make the money you want to make. So you got to do that work because w- the other choice is not fun at all. It's a life not lived. So what is the work? The work is paying attention to your body. I really think our body knows. Uh, I mean, a dear friend of mine, Rochelle Sheik, has started something called Koya, Q-Y-O-A. And her it's, it's like sacred dance. And the idea, her philosophy is that through our body helps us remember through movement that's it through movement we remember who we are your pain will come out and your sexy will come out and your passion your hunger all that so your body knows and maybe you're too scared to go to like a sacred dance class right now or even a yoga class right now but just pay attention to your breathing when you walk into work every morning it'll tell you a lot secondly we're all in the same boat trying to figure out who we are And just knowing that might help, you know, help level the playing field of competition in your mind. Yeah. And you have to want to find out. You have to want to find out. And it means, you know, you sign up for the art class or you show up for boxing class or you have a conversation with someone that's a scary conversation, whether that's like, hello, or I'm out of here. (laughs) <laughs> it's like, I, I wish I could remember who said this, but it's, you know, tell the truth, even if your knees are shaking, or even if you're shaking. Maybe it might be Audre Lorde, an amazing feminist. So you're going to do it anyway, and it's going to be so worth it. So worth it. And also, this is the last thing I'll say about uh, this huge topic, <laughs> is yeah. I think it's really important to, A, ask these questions of each other. It's important to be with other women. Women, 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 women. Be with other women. Get together in women's groups. Join a mastermind group. Do something where you're with, you're connecting with other women. It's it's so important. We heal together and then we go out and we heal the world. Yeah. Hmm. So I have, I can't tell you how much I've loved hearing about kind of the, the thoughts behind some of your creativity. And I would love to know if you have any any sort of rituals or anything around your creative process. Like uh, we have a friend who's an energy worker, um, Dina Welch, who I think we're going to talk to next week, actually. She's a big believer in just allowing and downloading. And she is she's so confident in this. And my God, I try it. Jen is really good at it. And I find it so difficult. So what I'd love to know, what does that look like for you? Well, I have the practical. So I have five planets in Virgo. I'm a Gemini, but at five planets in Virgo. So I need things. I need a lot of structure. Mm. And for me, allowing and downloading is is just part. It's like part one. There's a part two, <laughs> or there's or they're in reverse. Part one is I have to know what I want to say, and then I can allow and download. Like, what's my fucking point? Why <laughs> am I doing this? Is this really of service? And then I let it flow. In terms of practicality, I batch my time. So like one day of the week will be for podcasting and interviews and returning calls and just and or one day will be just for like getting stuff done. I really, really, really need solitude and unscheduled time to be creative. And I work, I really work to make that happen. So no phone calls that day, quiet, and then I can allow and 
and do the download. Yeah. But to, in order to make that happen, I mean, the most important word in that sentence, I think, was I work <laughs> to make that happen. Mm. So, you know, there's we talk so much about focus and how that's necessary. I think there needs to be more conversation around how hard it is to execute focus not like oh it's hard to focus because so much is going on but it's actually really difficult to say no to things because of esteem issues or we want to be loving or we want to be caring we want to be considerate who wants to hurt anybody's feelings when they say no nobody with the conscience it's not easy saying no but focus is the difference between flourishing or being nuts and fried yeah (laughs) So um, do we think we're ready for the last question? Do we get everything we needed? I, yeah, I I, so. I, yeah, I think we wrap it up. It's been awesome. Yeah, this has been incredibly mm-hmm. awesome. So uh, I, I get to be so lucky because I get to ask you the last question, Danielle. Okay. Here we go. Okay. What was the I'm last song? Yes, yeah, sit up. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. Shoulders Bring back, it. chest out. What's the last yeah. song you listened to before you did this podcast interview? Oh, I can tell you it's on my phone. Ooh. Uh, it's a little, uh, well, it's not a little esoteric. It's highly esoteric. I have to get the name right. Hold on. Narayan, N-R-N-A-R-A-Y-A-N by Nirajan Kaur. It's a chant. Mm. Of course. And she's, she's a beautiful, it's just it's a beautiful mantra. Aww. I can go on. Let me say one more thing about this. <laughs> I play mantras in my house constantly. Like even if queen is blasted in the kitchen or it's like David Bowie Monday in my house and some room in the house on an old iPhone that doesn't quite work anymore. There's a, there's a mantra playlist because you know, those mantras are embedded with sacred energy. They clean the air. So yeah. (laughs) <laughs> do you have like a shared Spotify play? You, no, you said it was like off of my old iPhone. Because I'm like, ooh, that would be like a fun playlist to yeah, share. Yeah, I should. I should. That's I, You know what? I will take that as inspiration. I need to do a Spotify mantra list. But everybody could just play the Narayan one all the time. It's good, basic, sort of heart. It's a nice heartwarming mantra. 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 <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you really have David Bowie Mondays in your house? Because... I need to institute a David. I Bowie. have a da- yeah. I have a David Bowie Monday playlist from a <laughs> yoga friend, and yeah, music is huge in my life. So I love that question. Like, it's it's a big thing. Cure one of my superpowers is pu- curating playlists. Mm. One of the uh, one thing I want to impart to my child before like I die is why Led Zeppelin needs to be appreciated far more than Rolling Stones. Like, it's just <laughs> oh yes. It, it, it's constant. It's con- music is constant in my life. Daniel, Everything, you know, yes. I, I was just saying this to somebody the other day. I need to listen to Led Zeppelin every once in a while just to remind myself I'm alive. They're right. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Like you really want to know. If you want to be your own spirit animal, you need to listen to Zeppelin. Yes. Although my spirit animal is Freddie Mercury. Ah, Freddie has taught see, me so much I mean, about how to be in the world. Fit bottomed girls. Like, fit yeah. bottomed girls. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know that's yeah. one of the reasons I was an immediate yes when, really? when you guys invited me about? I was like, oh, they must yeah. be Freddie fans. I'm like, like so in. So yeah, uh, yeah. We make the workout world go round. That's our twist on it. So yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Of course, we're, of course, uh, you're our animal. What a good note to end on. Yes. <laughs> Wait, let's. I want to end on your original truth bomb at the top. So what's you make you make the fit world go round? But what's the other one? Don't hate on yourself to get healthy. You can't Not hate it. yourself healthy. You can't hate yourself healthy. Oh, if everybody just heard that on like on a cellular level, ah, it can then then take it to the next level. You want to be healthy, deepest possible love and respect for yourself. When it's hard to love yourself, that's the catch. Yeah. Real love happens when it's hard to love yourself. Love yourself when you feel like a loser. That's where it becomes medicine. <laughs> Love it. Oh, that's fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you for all of your time, energy. Yeah, that was awesome. 
Love this show? Tell us why in a five-star review on iTunes, and we'll read it on the air. Also, make sure you are a subscriber. If you want to reach out to say hi or have a question about a recent episode, yay, well, feel free to email us at podcast at fitbottomgirls.com. And if this podcast jives perfectly with your brand, consider sponsoring the show. Get more info by emailing advertising at fitbottomgirls.com. Find all kinds of Fit Bottom goodness online and on social media at Fit Bottom Girls, Fit Bottom Mamas, Fit Bottom Eats, and Fit Bottom Zen. And if books and movies are your thing, check out the other podcast I co-host called Book vs. Movie, which you can find anywhere where you search for podcasts. Thanks for listening.